Good Wednesday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and motorcycles, SUVs, the camper, the dog, the Kiefer dog, one of my subscribers, didn't recognize Kiefer being with us, but he is. Kiefer is always with us, and he's always causing trouble. That's the Kiefer world. I just don't yell yell at him as much. I think that's what the difference is. Ah, uh, he's aging. He's getting a little better. But anyways, wow, what a beautiful Wednesday morning, pre Fourth of July day. Always good Wednesday morning to all those who watch my channel. Appreciate all the support. I really appreciate Don, the man who saved the pool. Man, fighter, fighter Don, fighter Don. Is that what we should call him this morning? It's been unbelievable. Unbelievable how yesterday. Morning, when I had the matter conversation, he watches my video on a regular basis. He participates a lot in my channel, which I appreciate that. Hope he and the wife, Jenny, had a great time on their travels. They like to travel and go do things, which is really cool. They definitely are the people that are on the move. So, anyways, I would think, you know, it's really funny here, Don. You, uh, we were talking about your brand new CR F300 rally, and he's funny because he sent me pictures on my of his brand new bike and how pretty it is and it is it's a good looking bike i actually saw one sit out in front of the dealership at Simbrook honda and uh it's a cool bike but it wasn't dirty and so i said come on you get that thing dirty and he responded it's not a dirt bike it's an enduro bike and i was tempted to respond back and go no it is a dirt bike with turn signals on it and a rear plate on it and a speedometer really fancy instrumentation but it's a dirt bike Yes, it is. But anyways, it's a really cool bike, and he's loving it. Look at this here. So if we're for Don, I'm not so sure his pool would still be up today because of uh, what I created to myself. And Don was so smart to say, hey, man, grab a piece of pipe, stuff it up inside, and get creative, which I did. I got creative, and I got some straps, and I wrapped it, and I pushed up on it. And you got to be kind of careful without creating other problems but it really did stop the problem now over here is an ongoing problem but for the moment uh this thing seems to be under control and it's i was just blown away that this gorilla tape is holding and i should get that flex uh seal stuff i think as well but the thing is about this pool is you have these uh you have oh, i love it you got these brand new uh the brand new rafts the dogs want to whiz all over them but here's your intakes to get the water to circulate in the pool and if this water gets too low you have a problem so i'm right there on the line that if this pool got any lower then these intakes would then start sucking air and you lose your whole water filtration system in the pool basically the pool is destroyed so wow thank you don wow just good to have friends you know, YouTube, I mentioned so many times, it's so aggravating for the challenges to make any income. But I can honestly say for all the nice people I've met through my YouTube channel, you'll never you'll never be able to put a value of that on life of what you you meet people that are just truly uh, good people that are really wanting to help others. And so, uh, and so as you always, my YouTube channel, I just try to take a word of the day and I try to get creative of how that kind of goes to the cars and motorcycles. And I know... Here lately, I've been a little political more than I think I have, have been recently. But it's just the aggravation that we live in a society of uh, just a social media machine. And the media machine just really brainwashes people. It's so sad that people truly believe everything they read and listen to. And uh, and so I thought the best word today would be go for the uh, one from the broke conversations on Monday to matter conversations yesterday. I thought law. We haven't talked about the law uh, conversations and I thought wow and that's huge because I've gone through my life and I've had to use lawyers to get myself out of what I got myself into and who doesn't know that story or you need a lawyer to write wills lawyers for divorces so lawyers even though they get such a bad rap um, but when you get the right one and helps you out in life you come to respect a lawyer which um, I'm sure somebody out there understand that thought process and language there's my little uh, pool towel went in there late yesterday but just too cold i've been spoiled of being down in florida and that pool 
the pool wasn't too bad, but the outside air just isn't that warm. That's the downside up here of this Virginia area. It doesn't really have that Florida type of heat is consistent. So the pool use, come on back, Keith. Come on, get up there, everybody. Well, didn't the door open? No. <laughs> Whoops. Door is not like the. Sorry for all the jingles. Come on. No, you're not going up there. Go. Yeah, I, 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 I got it. Get up there. Come on. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Tifer's a challenge. Never any. So, uh, that pool was cold. And my daughter went to the gym yesterday. She got back home about 7 o'clock. And I'm like, you're not going to want to be in this pool. You're going to freeze. You got a bikini on. I'm like, nope. Nope. It ain't going to work. Uh, so, I was out there for a while. But it's cold. It's breezy. It's chilly. And that's the thing. That pool, I'll be lucky to get two months out of that pool. Maybe three. I mean, if you want to freeze your ass off, it doesn't have a heater. And sure, I mean, I've done that before. But anyways, back to the law conversations. And we all know that if every 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 person owns a car, motorcycle, truck, whatever, whatever, whatever it may be, the privilege, yeah, the privilege. You're taught this very young in life if you took driver's uh, education that in Virginia, to have a Virginia license, and I think most states are the same laws, it's a privilege. So for you... You, you've been privileged to give a driver's license under the laws of that state to drive around in a vehicle or drive around on a vehicle. And, and so that's, that's very important because that means that the state can control your, it's not a right. So hear me out. The law of the land is you don't have a right to a driver's license. You have a privilege to a driver's license, which means that you have to take a driver's ed course and or take a driver's course at the DMV and you have to pass that in order for you to qualify to have a driver's license and you know there's many stories of people taking a driver's test that can't pass <laughs> that, that's uh, I'm not lying you heard these stories person has to take the test over and over again because they have to know the law of the land of how to drive these vehicles because who doesn't witness this every day of your life of who obeys the driving laws of the state city of the, where you live. You see the people that abuse the laws of the, of the highways and streets by people all the time. And that's why, of course, you have law enforcement that ride around in police cruisers and police motorcycles that enforce the laws of the roads. And I know it's aggravating because if you get pulled over for speeding, you feel like in so many ways, how is that fair when everybody else is speeding? Especially if you just get pulled over on the beltway or some major highway where everybody's hauling ass. Now, you're going down the back roads or you're doing some derelict things, yeah, and there's no bleeding hearts for you in that. But when you're just out on the general roads and you live on a road, there we go 70 miles an hour up and down the road on that's posted 50 mile an hour speed limit at 55, and eventually you get the ticket, it's aggravating because every day of your life you know people drive up and down the road breaking the law. And, and so it goes with that, as everybody knows, is it goes to the insurance industry, which I've talked about this for the past 30 years of my life and how it's such the, uh, the game of the insurance industry and the laws of the uh, speed limits and the laws of traffic violations that gives them the right to charge you more for insurance and label you as a bad driver. Now, keep in mind, there's definitely people out there that definitely do need to have that, uh, that slap on the hand. But I think for most people, you know that you drive for 30 years. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry for the cough and hacking. I'm in the early morning drinking the coffee and getting my voice going. But you know as well as I do, if you're the individual that's driven 30 plus years and have a really clean driving record, and you get that one violation, that's kind of a major violation for you getting a little too uh, hasty. Oh, it's brutal. And I've been through this. I've talked about it on my channel before and how I've been... Uh, I got myself in a lot of trouble. I'm going to put my plug in my phone here because uh, the uh, phone didn't charge last night. So I don't know what that's all about. Why is my phone? When I was down in Florida, I totally lost. This phone got wet and it couldn't charge. This morning, I can already tell this thing's... There it goes. It just doesn't end. Who doesn't have these problems, right? So, uh, so anyway, so for those people that drive cars and motorcycles... I think most people, there are a select few people, there's no doubt in my mind, I've heard these stories that have never gotten a traffic violation. Yes, 
there are select people that literally have gone through life and been very fortunate and they've never had a moving violation, traffic violation, or even been in an accident. Who hasn't been in an accident? You know, for me, I fall under a lot of areas of where I've gotten myself in trouble by driving a car and have gotten pulled over or I've been in a horrific car crash. So I've had all those own experiences in my life, especially at a very young age. I'm very lucky to even be alive because of a horrendous car crash I was in when, like, 1984, and I had a Volkswagen GT, uh, GTI, one of the first to come to this country, and I borderline totaled it. And so, and for that, for that, back in 1984, for that crash, it labeled me, and it really destroyed me being able to afford to have insurance, where I drove around a beater car with no insurance for years. So, uh, but I didn't have anything, so I didn't care. I was just a kid. Sue me. <laughs> Sue me. You want my socks, shoes? Didn't have any assets, didn't have anything. So, so, but I, fortunately, I didn't get myself in trouble riding around with no insurance. But everybody knows those stories. That's a huge problem. And that's why I can say to Florida, insurance is so expensive down there because so many people have uninsured insurance. So, every, you know, every state has different laws. And that's another thing that, too, when you move into a state, you better make sure you understand the laws of the land. You better make sure when you're driving through a state, you understand the laws of the land. Because I was talking about this coming back home a week ago, Tuesday. Hard to believe. So we go Tuesday, came back. Hey, the Ford Ranger, the Ford Raptor. That thing is so much fun. This thing is fast. That truck is fast. I drove it yesterday. I actually took it to the car wash and got it all cleaned up. What a great truck. I mean, my, my challenge in my life is I just love everything that I own. I mean, just, uh, you know, I drive. Like, oh, my gosh, this is now like Mr. Sanchez. Says, oh, now that's the best vehicle. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the best brand now. All right. So, in the state of Virginia, um, anybody goes through the state of Virginia on a highway that's posted 70 mile an hour speed limit, anything over 80 is automatic reckless driving. And one of my help desk uh, friends, he was like, wow, I am so glad I watched your channel and learned that because I go through Virginia every now and then and to data centers and I run some high speeds. You just taught me a lesson that, yeah, in the state of Virginia, once you're over 80 miles an hour, even though you're only 10 miles an hour over, it doesn't matter. But the law of the land in Virginia is 20 miles an hour over in any given um, posted speed limit is automatic reckless driving. And for reckless driving, it was, I didn't realize this until I got a reckless driving ticket uh, back in 19, back in 2018, just right after I buried my father-in-law. And my brand new Ford Raptor was badass on Route 81 in Lexington, Virginia, which is one of the strictest districts in the whole state of Virginia, of how they treat traffic violations. And that's interesting. When you call an attorney, the first thing I ask you is, what county jurisdiction were you in? How do I know this? Well, I just had something happen recently with somebody I know on a very personal uh, relationship that maybe uh, could have gotten them into a lot of trouble. So the, uh, the point is, in the state of Virginia, a reckless driving ticket, and I think even the insurance industry in general, treats a reckless driving ticket worse than a DUI. Wow. <laughs> I was blown away when my attorney told me that. I was like, and that was later in the game once we were going through all the process to get the case to go to court and hopefully beat it, which for the most part we did, uh, thank goodness, because the insurance company is going to jack your rates through the roof. And once again, this is the facts. You're better off getting a DWI than a reckless driving ticket. Isn't that just beyond believable? You're better off driving around drunk in your car or high in your car because it goes both ways. You, know, you can get pulled over for uh, you know, smoking dope or smoking pot. So don't, don't think that you, get, you can go smoke pot and a police officer pulls you over and can't give you a, uh, a what, you know, it's not called a DWI. Well, I guess it's, well... Operator impaired, I don't know. I guess you call it a DWI, driving while impaired. So, believe it or not, I talked to a police officer one day about this young guy, and he said, oh, it's huge. It's huge And how in the evening time, and they have German Shepherd dogs and other special dogs that can smell the pot. So, don't think if you're smoking pot and you're driving down the road that you're, the cop isn't going to all of a sudden pull you out of the car and go, okay, we got to do, we got to, <laughs> and right, you can fight all that stuff. But the whole point is, in the state of Virginia, in other states, uh, reckless driving is going to have a, a, you're going to be looked at worse on a reckless driving ticket. And that's what just really 
irritates the hell out of you. Because if you're caught in the state of Virginia doing 85 miles an hour up 95, when everybody's doing pretty much 80, everybody's doing 75 to 85 miles an hour on these uh, Route 95 quarters. If you drive the roads, you know this. Nobody's really staying the speed limit. Some do, but most don't. And you get pulled over the state of Virginia, you're just going to be really upset that you're getting a reckless driving ticket for just being, in your eyes, not really that radical speed. And that's the thing about the cars and trucks that we own these days. You know as well as I do, the cars at 80 miles an hour are just humming down the road. It isn't anything. The, the car's not struggling. The car can break. The car can really handle those type of speeds very, uh, very well. And it's a very confident vehicle. So it's very aggravating that you're now labeled that you're a reckless driving person and in the insurance uh, records, if you get that reckless driving ticket, your insurance is going to be probably dropped from the insurance company you deal with, but they'll probably quadruple your uh, premium. I mean, yes, because when I was in the courthouse down there in Lexington, Virginia, where it's the Military Institute of Virginia uh, town of law, yeah, when I drove in that town, I understood why this judge is so strict in that county. Because it's the, uh, the Virginia Military Institute, where all the, you know, it's the beginning, true beginnings for a young person that's being taught the law of the land and the law of society and to be groomed to protect our country and protect others and blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, wow, this is, uh, I can just feel, you know, how strict this town is and how, it's, how strict just the area is. You can just feel that you just don't screw around this town. And so when I walked out of that courthouse, my attorney said, well, I just saved you $6,000. I was like, what? He's like, if you would have gotten that ticket, you would have, your insurance would have increased your car. He didn't know the cars I owned to $6,000 a year. I'm like, what? And you know what he said to me? Ask me how I know. I said, well, what do you mean with that? He said, I had a reckless driving ticket. He says, I'm an attorney, but I've gotten myself in trouble too. You can be police officers have gotten themselves in trouble too just because you're a police officer, a lawyer, a doctor. What, you're a doctor and you never get sick? I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, you know, it's like taking an idea that you're a plumber and your plumbing never breaks. I mean, you're a mechanic and your mechanical car doesn't break. I mean, yeah. So he's like, oh, yeah, man, I got a freaking records driving ticket. And it was brutal. And I'm like, you know how many cars I have? Do you realize that that would have destroyed my whole car collection? Because my insurance would have been through the roof. And people always ask me about all your insurance. Insurance is, yeah, yeah, that's a note for me. That's a lot of money. But by the law of the land, you got to have insurance, especially if you have vehicles financed. A uh, financial institution is not going to let you own one of their vehicles. And you'd be paying on a note on it, and you don't have insurance on it. There's no way. They'll come and take it away from you because the insurance company is going to be at dire straits if you total the thing and you got nobody to pay for it. So that's, you know, as everybody knows, when you go to buy a motorcycle, you have to provide insurance before you drive off with that motorcycle. That's, that's the number one thing. If you've ever gone and bought a, bought a motorcycle, you have to show a binder and an ID card of that um, vehicle you just purchased before they let you take off that dealership. Now, car dealerships, they just take down your general uh, car information because you have 30 days which then to actually add the car. So if you forget to add your car, and the laws could have changed, but I know over modern times and recent times for me, my understanding is you have 30 days to add the car to your policy. And technically, in that time frame, technically, it's covered if you forgot to cover it to save and protect you. It could have changed those laws, but I think that's the way it is. And so, once again, you go buy, buy a motorcycle, they demand insurance coverage because what's the number one you know concern is you ride off on that motorcycle and you crash it. Yeah, who's going to, you know, the, the finance company's like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Yes. So, and you put gap. If you're smart, you'll put gap on your insurance on your bike if, if you financed it and you didn't put much money down. And for anybody out there that buys a car, even though it's not stupid crazy on the, the price of gap insurance, which I think they, they're abusing it by all means, especially commercial side. Commercial side now, Ford charges fifteen hundred dollars for gap insurance it used to be like six seven hundred bucks nine hundred bucks thousand bucks twelve hundred bucks now it's fifteen hundred dollars so on the commercial side when i buy these vehicles they say fifteen hundred dollar gap uh insurance premium 
that's added into the deal. Wow. But once again, you're a fool if you don't buy that because if you total that truck or vehicle and you didn't put much anything down, you know the story. You're going to have to pay the difference. If the vehicle was $80,000 and you finance it's $80,000 and the value of the truck comes in at sixty dollars or fifty, dollars you got to make up the difference. And the gap insurance does that for you. And if you ever sell the vehicle, the gap insurance is prorated back to you and given back to you for the unused portion of those monies. So if you spent $1,500, bucks, you keep the truck a year or two, you're going to probably get $900 to $1,000 back or selling that vehicle or trade. So it's, it's something I re definitely would recommend that you get. Now, once again, if you put a bunch of money down, then yeah, it's more or less a, a waste of money. Um, so the law of the land, as we know, it always goes back to the ice age, the EV age. And it's just incredible how I talked yesterday about the Chevron def deference, def deference bill written 40 years ago. Well, that bill, in so many ways, is the law of the land that was designed for the Clean Air Act and other EPA guidelines, giving the government bodies the law to tell the manufacturers what they can and can't do. And California is the number one law of the land, most aggressive uh, automotive attacker probably in the world. I guess you could go over to, to um, other countries, Sweden, Denmark, um, maybe Germany, I don't know. Uh, but the whole point is, in our, in our country, California sets the standards, unfortunately, for the laws of the way these cars are built. Now, you go back to the 70s, that wasn't so much the case. But the manufacturers got sucked into California's laws of being so stringent. And I lived out in California back in the early 70s, so I'm drinking water, so sorry. So I was there when you bought a California smog car versus if you didn't buy the car in california it wasn't a smog 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 car because of cadillac converters and someone can correct me if they if they want to on my channel and yesterday i did spew out misinformation um it's china is setting up spy camps in cuba so i kind of I, I read that the wrong way i thought it was uh russia building encampments there in Cuba. But when I reread that article yesterday, it's like, oh, I meant, I said that the wrong way. So, but, you know, anymore, China and Russia are buddies. <laughs> so, uh, the Chinese, are the Chinese spying for the Russians? Um, so, no. So, in Cuba, what they're saying through satellite imagery is they're seeing spy encampments that look like they're Chinese-built um, things going on in Cuba right now. Um, so, anyway, so back to the law of the land... California was really the first to really start hammering the automotive industry and forcing the hand to make these tailpipe uh, emissions to be more green agenda friendly, more carbon footprint friendly. So uh, you, you hear the stories, and it still goes on today, as far as I know. And back then, if you had a car that you bought in New York or Virginia or Florida, Kansas, whatever, and you wanted to take it to California and you wanted to get your tags and registration for it, you had to go through an emission inspection. And, uh, and once again, I could be a little off on this, and I don't know back then if they gave you an exemption, but for the most part, you had to get your car in order to be under the California law and guidelines of their very stringent emissions. So over years, the automotive industry saw that they had a very big challenge in how they could sell their cars throughout the whole country without having to kind of make a specific California car. And so really, you know, if you fast forward and you come to the end of what's really happened through California's very stringent law of tailpipe emissions and uh, what's it, the DCB, the, the, the exhaust, you know, noise and all that other stuff, the automotive industry is kind of caved to the California stringent um, laws so that they can just build the same car that will be legal in California or be legal in Virginia. And that irked a lot of people. And even the point for all the off-road, the SEMA, SEMA is, you know, aggressively having to fight all these, some radical states and other laws out there that are trying to take away the right for you to modify your truck, car, motorcycle, and to make it more of a high-performance vehicle. And, and, that's, and that's something that I said yesterday I think should be a glimmer of hope for the SEMA automotive industry is 
especially equipment manufacturing association that you know has the the, uh, the organization to help you if you're in a company that makes specialty equipment to modify cars. And so <clears throat> that Chevron deference, that should hopefully give them a, a, a new, fresh breath of air because hopefully that's going to make us where the government can't continue to go after these companies and sue them and we're going to put them out of business. I mean, right now Dodge is getting hammered. Ram is getting hammered by the federal government on these uh these Cummings trucks, they think there's a massive diesel cheat gate on those trucks. And they're sending out notices to everybody has these Ram trucks from, I would have to say, for the last, over the last 10 or 15 years, these trucks being built. And, and they're going after Ram and forcing the dealers to bring these trucks in the dealerships and to get them tested and to get them compliant without having fines. Yeah. Do you think that truck driver is going to go to the dealership and do that? There's no way in hell. There's no way in hell. Yeah, I guarantee there's a ton of other people out there, too, that know exactly what I mean by that. Yeah, forget that. Yeah, because there's people, there's companies out there that have been sued by the millions for modifying exhaust systems on vehicles. And that's uh, and that's why Harley, Harley-Davidson, Indian, Indian really retracted. Indian, for so many years, had a really cool aftermarket exhaust system, mufflers, and, and they, for the most part, and I could be wrong because I'm not an Indian guy as much as I was, but I know that Indian was taking away the slip-on exhaust systems. They didn't want to be any part of the modification of these motorcycles. And, and for Harley-Davidson, it's a very fine line on what they're doing as well. Harley-Davidson really pulled back. And even to the point that you really have to have a relationship with the dealer that takes the attitude of, ah, you know what? We'll support you, and we'll modify your bike. And if anything goes wrong, we're just going to kind of try to keep it, you know, we're going to try to make it look like it's not what it is, even though they have computer technology. So here, after I bought this bike, I regretted not thinking through putting a head pipe on this motorcycle. And I was like, why didn't I do that? Well, for the record, um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's available. It is available. But it's, it's mixed feelings. And, but I've done that. I did it my other Lowrider ST up here. I did that. And it was not a big deal. And it runs great. But um, once again, I talked to the guys there in, at the uh, Port Richard Harley. And the service guy, he was more for it. But the parts guy was kind of like, eh, I don't know. He was kind of a little more iffy because he was going to push the uh, tabs. I think it was called the tabs can't remember the name of the uh, the head pipe. That was like 500 bucks versus the Vance and Hines, I think, pipe, head pipe's like 1000 bucks. So he was pushing that, but he was saying that he's seeing, when they try to tune that head pipe, it's just, he feels like it just isn't there. So I don't know. That was kind of, that was kind of like a mixed, confusing message at that dealership. But the good news is I didn't do it because that's just another bunch of money. And the kid loves the way the bike handles and sounds, and it's more than good enough. And that's what's pretty cool on my CVOST back here, that with no head pipe, this bike sounds very loud. It's a very loud motorcycle. So it's more than enough for me. I don't need a head pipe. I'm very happy with the performance of this bike. At my age in life, being 61 years old, I'm just I'm not going to be the guy that goes 100 miles an hour down the back roads on a fully dressed motorcycle and try to show off to people. I'm not going to do it. Well, I go down the back roads and have some fun. Yes, but I'm not going to go get the, the 135 motor. That's the new motor out, the 135. 131's kind of true and tried. Once again, I was talking to her about the 135. The parts guy was kind of like, eh, I don't know. He's like, it's brand new out of the gate. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Where's that all going to go? And then it's the law of the land. <clears throat> when you modify these bikes, if you give the dealership the right to do it, then they're going to warrant it. They're going to warrant you the bike. Just like my supercharger here, once I get a chance to focus on that and get this car to dealership, um, Whipple and Ford have an agreement that if you have a certified technician install that Whipple supercharger, they're going to give me a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on that Stage 1 Whipple supercharger. Not Stage 2. That's a more aggressive, more high-performance motor. So I went to Stage 1 just because I really don't want to have to spend $30,000 to replace my supercharger in my motor 
and I'm sure that's the number you'd probably be at if you blow up the Whipple supercharger in the motor and for the time and labor, the Whipple supercharger is close to $13,000. <laughs> I guarantee you the motor is every bit of 15, <laughs> if not 20, I'll say 10. You're at 23, put labor in it, you know? So you're up to $30,000 ticket. So no thank you, I'm not racing the car. So it's good for me. So now, I'm gonna kind of wrap it up here. And the reason I thought of the law, is because we have the uh, 4th of July here, up on our doorstep tomorrow for all those that are traveling. And I think a lot of people will take advantage of a nice four day weekend trip, I would. Uh, in so many ways, we should be in Tennessee. But if it wasn't just for my hectic schedule of me being down in Florida, and only getting back just a week ago. So just a week ago, I was getting out of bed after driving until close to uh, 2 in the morning, like, or staying up until close to 2 in the morning, getting back from Florida, and then, you know, it's not even a week later, me just then getting everything back in order in the business. There's just so many things going on. So it's just a, it's just a hit-the-wall type of energy that you just run, you know, I'm sure everybody out there knows what I'm saying. You hit a wall. You're just eventually like, wow, I'm just done. I'm toasted. I'm tit. I just, I'm just done. I got to take a time out. So for me, to pack up the bikes, the trailers, and, nah, 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 you know, nah, yeah, yeah, and forget it. I'm just not up for it. I'm not up for it. Plus, it costs a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I have to pay people to take care of my business. I have to pay people to take care of my dogs. I mean, you know, it starts adding up. And the fuel, it gets very expensive. And uh, so, so pass. Which will just be, that's why I got the pool up, which I think is really cool. But anyway, so the law of the land, I just thought with the uh, Supreme Court rulings on the uh, Chevron um, deference uh, bill that is opening the door up for the um, for companies to more challenge the government's guidelines of what they think is right versus wrong on the uh, tailpipe emissions and all the green agenda stuff. I just thought that's a huge win for for us. And, uh, and then for uh, Donald Trump to have immunity. And what's interesting is all the liberal people are getting all pissed off at this. And don't get, anybody out there that's liberal, I'm out of my channel wanting, wanting to attack anybody in their political views. All I'm trying to say to my channel is, here, let's just talk some common sense. That's all it is. I'm not going to fight for Donald Trump. I'm not going to fight for Joe Biden. They're never going to enrich me or they're never going to come save me. They're never, you know, each one has their own views and ideologies and their programs. And I think that, a lot think more that Trump has a better program than the Joe Biden does. And so for me, it's interesting that you, the Constitution's constantly wanting to be written, rewritten. Well, as you know, tomorrow is a recognition of the Constitution that broke our country away from Britain for us to have our own law, of our own uh, independence of our country. But yet it's challenged more than ever when the Supreme Court actually follows the rule of the law of the Constitution. And then you get radical, radical people saying, that they that they wrote they rewrote the law to favor somebody and it's just like oh my gosh and that's the point of today's conversation is how much how many laws has joe biden passed since being in office you won't even know i would love to hear somebody on my channel tell me how many thousands of bills behind the scenes that joe biden has uh passed and he has uh, um ripped up uh, of Donald Trump's bills that they just go, they get, that's what happens. A new president comes in and they take the laws of the previous um, administration. They just start ripping up all the laws that they have and they create all new laws. And it's just, you know, a back, it's just a ping pong game in so many ways of back and forth. So under Joe Biden, I'd be willing to bet that that guy's passed more laws and regulations than any <clears throat> um, modern uh, term president in, uh, in, in our age. I've proved me wrong. I can take the criticism. I can take the opposing view. I mean, I can take a guy that's a Joe Biden lover and say, you know, you're wrong. You're wrong in that. Uh, Donald Trump passed more <clears throat> laws than, than Biden did. Okay, that's fine. Let's learn together. Let's not argue. Let's just learn together. Let's just try to come to peace with each other at what seems to make sense to uh, help this country be the independence of what it was created back from 1776 through the uh, War of Britain. And, uh, and keep the tradition going instead of destroying our country and being at war with ourselves to bring what to the table? All new laws. And so, and that's why it just kind of cracks me up that so many people are calling Donald Trump the next dictator. He's going to destroy our country. And I'm just thinking, wow, wow, are you, are you guys watching the laws of the land? How district attorneys have taken the laws of the land and rewritten them to, to the advantage of criminals? I mean, sincerely, 
Have you witnessed on how the immigration laws, um, they try to rewrite them. It's a constant, you know, it's a constant battle back and forth. It's a political world. But at the same time, do you really feel like the law of the immigration has gotten better or worse? Uh, do you feel like this sitting administration breaks the laws? Meaning that they want to legalize illegal immigrants to have the rights for federal elections? I mean, I mean sincerely. So it just cracks me up on how is the fo- what has been the focal point of this sitting administration from the get-go it came out. From the day one that this administration came into office, it prosecuted all the January 6th uh, participants who were breaking the law of the land. Um, and then it was, you know, really the never-ending persecution of Donald Trump, of him breaking the laws under his presidency. Um, and so if you really just kind of step back and look at Joe Biden and you start thinking to yourself, all the laws that he's brought, you know, the, the Inflation Reduction Act, that's all new laws and guidelines being enforced more than ever upon you and I to you can't have um, you can't have a fire fire pizza oven in New York City. You can't have a gas stove in your house. You can't have an air conditioning unit that has this type of uh, freon or refrigerant in it. Um, you can just start going through the list of the laws of the land uh, and then rewriting the laws. And what uh, a guy can turn into a girl and he gets to play on the girls team, um, um, basketball team or swim team or whatever, where a guy can uh, then compete against the women because he's transitioned to be a, uh, a woman. And for this city administration, they have favored of rewriting the laws. And once again, I could be wrong with that. But the perception is that they've changed the laws of man and woman. And once again, I'm not here, I'm not here to belittle anybody, to be cruel with anybody. That isn't the message. The message is we're talking about law. And if, and if I get called out because I'm just talking about the facts of this city administration wanting to rewrite laws to change what we feel is right versus wrong, that's and to me, that's like, wow, really? You're telling me that I'm just trying to share on my channel that the city administration's laws, they've tried to rewrite the laws in so many ways, uh, defund the police. They've wanted to put community police in. Um, they've rewritten laws on who gets uh, monies versus who doesn't get monies. I mean, you hear the stories. Even for me, I don't believe the story. You hear these illegals are being put up in hotel rooms. They're getting $600 a month, they're getting free food. I mean, I don't know. You hear these stories, but who wrote the law in New York City to allow that to happen? Was it Eric Adams? Um, was it the, uh, the 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 governor of the state? I mean, and so you just start scratching your head. What is going on? On with all these new laws that are being passed right in front of our eyes, but you really don't even know about them because it's always internal down at the White House. Or I should say more of the uh, Capitol, of, uh, where all these sitting members of Congress and senators come to resolution on all these bills. And then for me as an individual, just like you, you just think it's the constant blame game. But these elected officials that are supposed to represent us are supposed to put the law of the land that makes sense. But then they just start pointing fingers at each other. And it just pisses everybody off, which I just, uh, it's just <laughs> beyond believable of, of what goes on with these political figures who get into power and how they just play the game. They just play the game. And that's one thing that so many voice is Donald Trump is the guy that wanted to drain the swamp to get rid of this stuff. But then so many attack him that he's the most devious, crooked loser. And once again, I'm not here to promote Donald Trump, but I'm just sharing with you what has been the main message under this sitting administration. Besides Donald Trump is one of the most law breaking, not law abiding, law breaking former president's ever and he's a convicted felon which they worked their ass off to get that convicted felon charge against him with stormy daniel daniels just to try to use that to intimidate you as a person that why would you vote for a person that has broken the laws i mean it's a no-brainer but yet every other politician especially this one sitting in office is mr never broke the laws oh come on i mean really you really believe that mr i mean there's no way you become political powers in this country you, you don't, can't get through life being an incredible, powerful person without twisting things to get there. It's just not going to happen. And sadly, what goes on, the laws are broken for you to advance yourself more than ever. So that's it. 
A lot more stuff for me to talk about. And it's incredible how they just posted General Motors is up 9% in car sales. So for all the gloomer doomer car guys, GM just posted for their uh, second quarter, they're up 9%. Electric cars, believe it or not, are actually up in sales as well. Elon Musk, he uh, he came in respectable numbers, uh, like 443,000 Teslas were sold. Uh, they were expecting to be much lower than that. So Tesla's stock took off yesterday because Tesla actually outdid what many thought would be kind of the dire straits for Tesla because of so many other electric vehicle manufacturers getting in the game. Um, Toyota, um, well, maybe, you know what, maybe it was Toyota. No, it was Toyota that was up 9%. GM was kind of just the same. So I was wrong on that. Uh, we haven't heard numbers from Jeep. But some of these companies, like Ford, they don't, they don't release, like, quarterly reports. They do, like, once half year reports. I think they change the way they release their numbers. So, but the whole point is, uh, Toyota's up 9%. GM's kind of just solid. Electric vehicles actually are still selling, and from year to year, they're actually up, but they're not up by anything dramatic. So, it's for all the gloomer doomers. And then I listened to this guy, another guy out of uh, Florida yesterday, walk around to many neighborhoods showing how all the builders are not finishing up um, new homes and you're walking away from new homes. And this guy swears up and down that the big crash is right here. This guy. As a statistic, guys, he, I mean, he, he, he shows you graphs, and he uses 2008, and he's saying, what's getting ready to implode in this country? It is right here on our doorstep, and it's happening big time. So very interesting. I can tell you from my own personal experience, in 2007, I saw the slowdown in the summer of 2007, fall, 2008. It really wasn't until 2009 that things really started to implode. So if you think that through, my own experience is, so let's just say right now, people really have kind of started to turn the lights off. It won't be anything that happens probably this fall. It will probably be going into a year from now where the real picture starts to come to be. Which I've said many times is if Trump gets into office, I think the Democrats are gonna have a field day on him because his economy goes to hell and they'll blame him on every bit of it. And for Joe Biden, if he stays in office, who cares? He's done his second term. Who cares? What, what difference does it make? He's not going to run again. Kamala will. That's scary. So anyways, that's it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching my channel. Stay tuned for more adventures. What do we do next? What are we going to do for July? Have some fun in the pool. Play with the doggies. Ride some bikes. We'll have some fun. Get some more video time, video content. So as always, thanks for watching my channel. God bless. Have a great day.